Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Sam, I'm an artist, or try to be, an illustrator and an aspiring knitting designer coming to you today from the very rainy, very cold Republic of Ireland. If you are new to this channel, this is my attempt of making a knitting podcast. It's actually my 32nd attempt or 33rd. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I kind of talk about my finished works, works in progress, acquisitions, and literally anything and everything that is going on in my crafty life. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, it's been a while, I know, it's been a few weeks uh, since I podcasted uh, last time. Uh, this because I didn't tell anybody, but I went uh, home to my country. I'm Italian originally, I've been living here in Ireland for a long time. To surprise my mom for her birthday, her birthday was uh, last week, so... I came down, celebrated the birthday, stayed there for a week or so. I worked from there. By the way, I am all the things that I mentioned, an artist, a knitting designer, and blah, blah, blah. But from nine to five, I am actually a lawyer. <laughs> so uh, it's completely different. The knitting, in fact, is the thing that keeps me sane. Uh, that allows me to have some mindfulness during the day and uh, just uh, stop completely thinking about my very, very stressful work and uh, work people, documents and all of that thing. I am very sure that you can relate as well. So, today we have quite a few items which will require a lot of uh, dress change. Uh, as we were in a theater play. Uh, this is because I have been knitting quite a bit. When I was back in Italy, I basically knit up a jumper in a week. You know, uh, back where my family lives, it's uh, the middle of literally the nowhere. It's a big farm in the Venetian region of Italy the first town uh, close by with uh, any hint of life is about uh, 40 minutes drive from my house which if you are probably American is nothing but you know taking the car going out all the effort it's just no way I rather stay at home knit up something and spend quality time with my family so the meant I finished the jumper in a week, which is brilliant. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, grab your coffee, your tea uh, or your knitting project if you wish. I am not sure if this podcast today is going to be short or a long one. Let's take it as it comes. The first thing that I'm wearing this sweater here. You have seen it uh, uh, finished and it was blocking back a couple of weeks ago uh, but I had many many requests to show the sweater on so I'm wearing it and it is extraordinarily warm. So this is the flatten sweater by... I have the book here. This lovely designer here. Um, I know that the name is Norwegian or Scandinavian generally. I don't know if the pronunciation is right, but I try. It's Birger Berge or Birger Berge. And uh, the sweater that I'm knitting comes from this book, which is Nordic Knits. It's published by Trafalgar Square. And I got this uh, second hand on. Uh, Amazon books for about 12 euro. It's a brilliant book full of lovely color work uh, patterns and this is actually this sweater here that hopefully you see on the cover if the glare is not too much. It's beautiful. It's uh, basically full-on color work and when I say full-on I mean from the very bottom of the jumper all the way through the yoke, the neckline and the sleeves. I might uh, model it for you a little bit. 
this is the sweater and as you can see it's literally full of color work the thing that I really enjoyed you can see here on the raglan the crease you can see on the bottom of my sleeves and as well probably on the side on each side of the jumper uh, now we're not on focus anymore those are um, little marks made out of color work so the thing that struck me for this pattern is that because you have those little uh, repetition those little marks so you know that you are right with stitch count with the color work pattern at every single row of your work it's absolutely brilliant so you can check halfway through the body if you're right so if you're not right you can just unravel halfway of the body because you know that at some point you do have that specific uh, teeny tiny color work to the mark the sides, the under um, sleeve, and the rug and the crease. I think that is brilliant. It is not a pattern, it's not an easy pattern, it's not for fainted hearts. It's quite um, complicated. The color work is big, as you can see, the repetition here. Am I on focus if I have no idea if I'm on focus, but we should be on focus. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's gonna be rough today. I'm very sorry about that. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, it's very um, complicated uh, color work pattern itself. You can't memorize it. It's not just a quick repetition that you know um, the color work at some point. I personally haven't got to the point of learning the color work by heart so i had to check the pattern all the way through originally i was uh, pointing the pattern with the pencil on the book itself but um, it was quite messy because you repeated the same pattern for the body and the sleeves so i had to make a photocopy of the color work chart and go from there um, having said that, this can definitely be a beginner jumper. If you have basic color work skills, I think this would be a great beginner jumper. I know I just said the color work is very difficult, blah blah blah, you can't memorize it, but the way the stitch count is defined, the way the jumper is constructed, is extraordinarily simple and the fact that you get all the checks at every point of the jumper makes you not lose anything. This is probably the first jumper that I need in which I come to the yoke with the exact stitch count that the pattern defines. There's always a stitch or two more, a stitch or two less, grabbing two stitches with your needle and don't realizing it and all of that mess. For this pattern, because of all these little things that the designer had put in, I think would be great if you are a very beginner. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Will take a long, long time though. Be careful of that. If you are a, a project knitter, it's called, a result knitter, if you look forward for the result and that's what drives you, this is probably not the work for you because it's just very long, it takes a long time. Yarn wise, I used a super soft wool from Holst Garn, a combination of a light blue and uh, my most favorite color ever in the world, which is Prussian blue, the darker blue here. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's a great combination. I thought it was a bit uh, pyjama-like, being this soft bluish color, but it actually looks very nice. If I knit it again, I would probably go with a white and uh, the same brush blue. This because gives a little bit more contrast, but I don't mind this at all. 
What else to say? Uh, I use a combination of 2.5 and 3 millimeter needles. Don't ask me the American sizes. I don't know them. <laughs> this is my general standard knitting combination. 2.5, 3, 2.5, 3.5 sometimes. And we will see later on in the projects that I applied this rule for my other uh, knits. Uh, sweaters. With this combination of needles, I mentioned this before uh, and I got a lot of questions so I need to be quite... Um, I want to be a little bit more clear. I have the 260 rule that you heard me mentioning before with 2.5 and 3, 3.5 millimeter needles. 260 is the number of stitches uh, that I cast on at the bottom of the jumper or if I'm working downstream from the top and down 260 is the number of stitches that I will get at my waist. For some sort of reason I that was the number of stitches that I casted on for my first jumper which was the Save the Children sweater by Arna and Carlos. You can find all the links in my Ravelry page down below in my uh, Instagram account, all in all, it's everywhere. So that jumper kind of started um, this rule of the 260, 2.53 millimeter needles. I then knit up uh, other sweaters, other jumpers, and I kind of found myself uh, swatching, checking the gauge, finding out what size it was, and so on and so forth. I came to realize after knitting uh, quite a few uh, jumpers that uh, 260 was the perfect number. I know if I stay within the 260 millimeter needles, 260 stitches, 2.5, uh, 3 millimeter needles, I get uh, a decent fit for myself. Now, we will see in the works in progress that this may change a little bit due to the yarn that we are using. So. I'm not saying find your stitch count and avoid the swatching. I'm saying you can speed up the process. If you know the yarn, if you know that the pattern is not uh, crazy with features, it's just a regular pattern, you can speed up the entire process. But uh, yeah, I think we spoke at length about this beautiful flatten sweater by Birger Berger. And uh, if you have attempted this sweater as well, let me know what you uh, think about it and if you have my same feelings about being a very uh, beginner-friendly pattern. Last thing to mention, super wash yarn. I was watching Inga from the Knitting Tradition, I think, and uh, she was mentioning that uh, um, she had a very coarse jumper, probably a dye lot from Holst Garn that was uh, really coarse and really rough, really rustic as wool. And then she started washing it, uh, washing the jumper over and over, and she found that after a few washes the yarn has actually become super soft. This was the case with this jumper here, especially the dark blue, the Prussian blue, was extraordinarily coarse as um, yarn. It created a fabric that was unbearable on my body. I'm still wearing a shirt underneath. Uh, this kind of is a safety feature and also because I have work to do. I'm working uh, from home. This is my lunch break, as usual. So uh, I wear a shirt anyway, but um, I feel like after washing this jumper four or five times, it actually got so much softer. It's really fluffy, warm and soft. So that is a great suggestion. If you like the idea of a host garden and also it's quite affordable, so you may have a few cones, but you can't wear it, just wash it more be a little bit more aggressive with the washing and yarn just magically changes. Good, so enough of that. 
we'll go on with the second finish work which is this one here and uh, this is actually the jumper that I needed almost in a week um, when I was back in Italy. This is the Cortina sweater by Arne and Carlos, which I am gonna try on for you now. It's the first time that I tried this on because it was a blocking. I did it quickly tried it before blocking and I found some issue with it, which we are gonna talk in a second. So let me change and I'll be back soon. So how is this looking? I think it looks pretty well. It's uh, a lovely pattern. So I'll give you a little bit of a background on this sweater here. I forgot to wear my glasses and I don't know if the camera is in focus. This is gonna be the silver lining of this episode. You can notice here I have a post-it on the face of that um, picture. I'll show you now. This is... this photo here is from a print of an Italian artist called... I don't remember but I will let you know eventually. And it's uh, of course the Sibilla Cumana, is it? From uh, Michelangelo. It's a painting that you find the Sistine Chapel and it's reinterpreted by this guy here. That is not the point. The point is that uh, my camera tend to focus on her face rather than on mine, which is understandable. It's a Michelangelo. It's me. <laughs> so I'm putting a post-it to avoid this issue here. Anyway, let's go back to our pattern. This is the um, Cortina sweater by Arne and Carlos, which is a pattern that was made back in the days, I don't know when, probably 2009, 11, something like that, for Dale of Norway, which is a Norwegian yard company. So, why did I want to need this jumper? It's very similar to my Marius sweaters. Uh, you've heard me talking about those at length in my previous episodes. I'm quite obsessed with this kind of design. I find it really simple but really effective. I want it because uh, the uh, Cortina sweater was designed to celebrate the Olympics uh, in 1956 so they were held <coughs> sorry they were held in uh, Cortina the Winter Olympics Cortina is a town very close by where I live so I felt like the feeling and we recently got just the announcement that the Olympics are coming back to Cortina in a couple of years so I really really wanted to celebrate that and I also liked very much the jumper itself. So I couldn't find a pattern. Someone on one of these videos was uh, saying that I should reach out to Arne and Carlos. So I did. Uh, they um, so very generous, generously replied, saying that they unfortunately don't own the rights anymore to the pattern that I should contact Dale. Dale of Norway it's brilliant. They sent me within an hour the pattern and the book itself in a PDF file, of course, which was great. The only point is that the pattern was written in Norwegian and there wasn't any way I could get the English version of the pattern. So, you know me, I'm a big fan of Arne and Carlos. I've knitted up many of their designs and um, yeah, just love them. And uh, so I took a bit of Google Translator, I took a bit of a dictionary, I took a bit of other Arne and Carlos's patterns and I could write down this one. And it turned out to be brilliant. The way the pattern is explained is just fantastic. The yarn that I used is uh, Drops Baby Merino. 
which is um, to ply filigree way yarn, um, baby merino superwash that I bought a few months ago, not that long ago, because I was kind of uh, annoyed by the fact that I can't wear wool. It's very itchy, it's annoying. And uh, merino is uh, really working fine with my skin. This is a super wash yarn, so it has some issues. I do like the fact that it's very sleek, very flowy, but after you wash it once or twice, the yarn goes all over the place, you lose gauge and everything. So, to prevent this, for this jumper, I used my 260 rule, but I went down a needle size so that the fabric itself will be more tight than the fabric that I generally get with my 2.5 5mm needle. So I use a 225 and a 275 to knit all of this, which require a lot of time. The big piece of um, stocking at stitch from the bottom to the beginning of the color work was atrocious so long having said that the sleeves went in one day each nothing brilliant the color that i use is like a navy dark blue and a gray although it looks like white the issue that i had when i knitted up that i was just mentioning i tried it right after knitting it up and it was extraordinarily tight especially on the neck and on the sleeves the problem is that this is a drop sleeve sweater, so you have to stick the sleeves in. You need to have the tube of the body, mark the sides, cut it through and stitch back the uh, sleeves. And I found it was really tight, I couldn't, I couldn't even get my uh, shoulder, my arm on the top of it. And uh, this is probably because being this super wash yarn and uh, being very sleek, the um, fabric doesn't stick together. So to do the sticking, I had to machine stitch around where I was uh, uh, cutting through just to get this little bit of security. I could have uh, crochet a reinforcement, but I'm not quite able to do that. I haven't ever looked into that. so machine is fine for me and I went with a double zigzag all the way around the sleeve cut and uh, that was perfect and it's fine. It was very tight. I washed it, I kind of blocked it a little bit aggressively on the sleeves and ta-da! fits very very well. Um, two things I want to mention is uh, all my cast on everywhere in every jumper are Italian customs. Now I found a brilliant tutorial by Caleb of uh, Drumming in Yarn which shows you how to do a very quick um, tubular Italianish custom. I will link this below here. It's actually brilliant and changed my life. Uh, a usual Italian custom is a uh, first custom flat, then you go backward and forward, uh, uh, slipping a stitch and knitting the other in, and so on and so forth, until you get the first couple of lines of the ribbon and you join the round. Who has time for that? I don't. So, that beautiful tutorial creates a lovely a uh, round edge, tubular-ish edge to your garment um, without having to do all these steps. Brilliant idea. Anyway, this was my second finish work, the Cortina sweater by Arne and Carlos. We, got, we have another jumper that is being finished, which is this one. And this is my attempt of an iron jumper. So let me try this on and then I'll come back to you. Here we go. This is the sweater and I think it just looks amazing. So 
This is the Moby sweater by Petit Nitz. It's the male version of the sweater. So I was saying this is my attempt of an iron jumper. Why am I obsessed over and over and during these videos with iron jumpers? Well, I do live in Ireland. I do recognize that iron jumpers are the most characteristic thing of uh, Irish knitting and Irish knitwear. And I really want one. I tried to knit iron sweaters many, many times uh, without any luck. I started with a pattern by Brooklyn Tweed and that was a disaster. I didn't know how to do cables, first off, so I had to learn that. I didn't know how to knit flat, I had to learn that. And all of those things. So I went through, I would say, 20 centimeters of knitting with a pattern and I frog everything. It was just a pain. The second attempt was, uh, I don't even remember the pattern and you can't find it in my rubbery page because I removed it and I burned it. <laughs> but it was a beautiful sweater. It's um, knitted flat with lovely cables, but it was well explained as a pattern. Turned out that I made a back piece and they started the front and it was ginormous. It was so wide that I was very disappointed. The work was beautiful, the cables amazing, the pattern once again explained very well. I swatched, the gauge was fine. It's just that it didn't work out. For some reason, probably the combination of yarn that I used and I don't know, the cables, it turned out to be massive. So I turned that back piece that was knitted up a cast off into a cushion cover. Second attempt. I wasn't going to make another attempt to destroy good yarn and uh, being annoyed with myself and the world because I wasn't able to knit up an iron jumper. So. I started kind of analyzing what was I missing, why wasn't I able to do that. It's not just endurance in knitting, it's just something was missing. And the thing that was missing was knitting in the round. I don't enjoy knitting flat. I don't like it. I don't know how to make gauge. I don't know how to sew the garment together. It's just a pain in the neck. So I was looking for a cable sweater knitted in the round and this Moby sweater by Petit Knit came up. I know that Petit Knit um, patterns are very well explained, very well done, so I knew, although I had to invest a couple of euro on the pattern, that could have been a great solution for me. And it is a great solution. <laughs> it's uh, knitted in the round, you start from the back part of the yoke, uh, you need a little bit, then the front one, and you connect together and then you go down, and the sleeves. Brilliant. This is knitted up in mm, Drops Merino Extra Fine Decay, and this has issues. So I bought this because, first of all, the super soft situation that I was mentioning. This is extraordinarily, it feels like cotton, doesn't teach at all, nice and warm, very sleek, and so on and so forth. The issue is that it becomes massive when it is knitted up. So no index went down the size and all the things that we do to avoid the stretching. Still, let me say that it's long. Look at the sleeves, it's really long. I don't mind because it's a cozy iron jumper. I do mind because I would prefer a better fit. Now, I don't have a great uh, gym type of body, all the rip and all, so I don't, although I like fitted garments, I don't think this specific jumper like you can't see from the camera, but I don't think it focuses the attention of the audience <laughs> to the right places. If you don't know what I mean, guess. 
I feel though that this was a massive improvement. At least I have a cable jumper that borderline looks like an iron sweater. This is what I wanted. What happened is that I started a new one with a different yarn and I'm so much happier with that but we'll talk about that in a second. What am I going to do with this? I am going to gift it probably to someone or bring it home and uh, my mom, my sister can wear this, it's fine, it's not a waste of yarn. I got that drops um, Merino Extra Fine Decade just because it was really cheap, a couple of euros a ball. I used here 13 balls of yarn, which is an enormous amount of yarn if you think, but they went very quickly and 13 balls for a couple of euros, like 25 euros altogether is nothing, uh, literally nothing for this sweater, for a hand-knitted jumper with decent wool. I'm very happy with this, I'm not happy with the yarn, though, and you do. Now I start a new one and we'll see. By the way, if the Cortina sweater went on in a week of uh, constant knitting, this went by in 10 days with not constant knitting, so knitting here and there in the evenings. And you will see in my works in progress how quick that is. Good! We are talking about Finnish works and I want to mention one last Finnish work, which is this one. This is, I don't know now, the situation of focusing today is all over the place. This is a little shamrock that uh, um, I created as a pattern. It's in my rubbery uh, page, I will link it below here. Um, I put a little pin backing on the back of this with some hot glue and the idea here is that you can use it as a pin for the coming St. Patrick's Day and I think it's absolutely adorable. You can use this as a pin or as a button or as an applique to some garment. I think is pretty nice. Um, the pattern is for free, is entirely knitted in the round, so all the things that I do like and does take nothing like 10 grams of yarn. With 10 grams of yarn you probably make three of them, so <laughs> really really easy and quick to make. And I think it looks just amazing. St. Patrick's Day is coming, so I'm knitting a few of them to wear during the parade or will spend the day probably in a pub uh, for all my friends and people that uh, comes up just to have a token I think is a nice way to show some Irishness. And you can find the pattern in my um, rubbery page or in Lovecraft. Now I read a comment in the pattern page, the project page, saying that the pattern was for sale and uh, the pattern is not, it's free. I am noticing that both on YouTube, on Ravelry, on Instagram, people are kind of uh, stealing your stuff and um, yeah, be careful because I, if I say that the pattern is free, it's free, if I say that it's for sale, it's for sale, this is free, so if you find the same pattern for sale somewhere else, uh, just go back to my robbery page and you find it free. Um, as well, if someone reaches out to you saying you want a price from me and ask you to give them your address, uh, your email, stuff like that, don't. If you win a prize, you will know about that because I will tell you face to face on these videos. Otherwise, there is no prize to be won. <laughs> I will never send you an email asking for your, for your details, uh, uh, for your phone number, your bank details, your addresses. I will never reach out to anybody saying you want something from my channel. I would do the other way around. If you want something, I will announce here on the video and then you will reach out to me. So please, please, please be super careful. I know that these bad people are around and be suspicious. 
if you receive one of the emails, uh, a message on Instagram, on YouTube, just contact me in private. My email is irishfarmart at gmail.com, you find it below, and uh, ask me. I'll be really happy to tell you, to jump on a call and tell you face to face if it's true or not. But be very careful. Anyway, this was my last work in progress. Um, another thing that made me being super Irish this year is that I got finally approved for Irish citizenship. So uh, I don't need to become Irish uh, for travel issues or to stay in Ireland or work in Ireland. I'm Italian. Ireland, the Republic, is part of the European Union. So with my citizenship I have all the rights that Irish people have apart from voting or becoming Taoiseach or President. Or... I don't even know that, to be honest. Anyway, I have been living here for 10 years now. I do feel like Ireland adopted me. I feel very much within the culture of Ireland. So a few years ago I applied for naturalization, which is the process in which someone who stably lives in a country eventually is granted uh, the citizenship of that country. And I got approved uh, last week. I received a letter from the Minister of uh, Justice saying that uh, it's the intention of the Minister to approve your citizenship. I paid the fees for my citizen certificate and now I'm waiting for the date of the final ceremony in which they will, um, I suppose, make me swear loyalty to this country. Um, it's funny because I never sworn loyalty to Italy. I was just lucky enough to be born there and um, yeah, it makes you raise the question if you are born in a country, if you're loyal to that country by default. I'm loyal to Italy, I love being Italian and I wouldn't be anything else but Italian if I could choose. I'm going to become Irish because I love this country very much and uh, who knows, I probably will become president in 30 years time, who knows. Anyway, this was my next Finnish works and last one as well. Let's talk about works in progress. So I feel like because I'm wearing this, I'm looking down because I have all the projects aware, um, around the place here, we should talk about the second iteration of this jumper, which is living now in a lovely Fallon and Burns bag. Fallon and Burns is the local, not very local to me, but local enough, a uh, grocery shop. It's extraordinarily fancy. Uh, you can definitely find all the Italian uh, produce and uh, stuff that you would find in Italy, but super posh, super expensive. Anyway, don't judge me if I shop there every now and then. This is the work in progress. This is the second iteration of the Moby sweater. And uh, you can see here how it starts from the back yoke. I've knitted it all and then you go down with the two um, shoulders and then you join for the front. At some point you will join in the round. The yarn that I'm using, it is gorgeous color here, is probably one of my favorite uh, color of yarns. I'll tell you what it is now. This is Pierre Gint by Sunness Garn and this is the color 9572 Folding, which is this gorgeous olive green here um, in the video. It's quite accurate, you probably see it a little bit darker. I had this in my stash. I almost didn't know that I had this. This was meant to be a contrasting color for another sweater. In fact, I had a lot of yarn um, in a beige color and a few balls of this green color. But this is a color that I would wear a lot. So I started swatching 
for the Moby sweater because I really knew that I wanted to make another one. So quick, so fun, fits very well. And um, yeah, I got carried on and it turned out to be wonderful. Uh, the fabric is beautiful. It's uh, of course not super soft wool. It's very coarse, very nice and woolly. Uh, and quite thick as well, so positive, positive, positive. What else to say about this? Yeah, I liked it so much that my little two balls of yarn turned out to be 13 balls because I want to make this entire jumper, so I went on this gorgeous French website uh, that sells sunless yarn and I bought uh, the remaining of this pure gint, same dialogue luckily, and same, no same dialogue, same color, and uh, it's, uh, it's just great. Looking forward to get this done. Yes, let's start here with an intermission. So pure gint is a Norwegian DK yarn, it's very woolly. If you are familiar with um, drops, drops charisma is the closest that you get to peer gained. The only thing is that this feels so much better quality. Drops Charisma is a little plasticky, if you wish. This is just woolly loveliness. I used this yarn before to knit up the bubble sweater by Stephen West, and that was great. I knew that I wanted more garment in this yarn. I would have never said it, but it's freezing cold in Ireland, it's minus temperature now, and it's never been so long, so cold, and I found myself wearing jumpers more and more often. You know, Ireland is quite mild, we have the Gulf Stream, it's not uh, northern Italian temperatures, so very low snow and nothing, but it's been very cold lately, so wearing this type of fabric, this type of wool, now makes more sense. So what I did while I was on that French website that is absolutely magical, that I would recommend 100%, I bought some more yarn, some more pergint. This is uh, number 2720 and it's called on the website Nougat Tutti Frutti. It's, um, as the name suggests, nougat color, so a beige, with sparkles of uh, colors. We have blue, we have red, we have yellow, orange, all of them. I saw someone on my Instagram knitting this same jumper, probably inspired by this one, using this color. And uh, I was sure that I couldn't find it, but they had, in this website, 13 balls of this one. So I bought it and I am looking forward to knit something with this. I don't know what, but I think this will turn fantastic. So far from my usual style, I am more this. I am not a speckly yarn, but I don't know. There's something that really attracts me to this one. So yeah, the other acquisition. I know that there is another one that is um, grey and speckled with blue, electric blue, which I really want, but I couldn't find that. So if you have any idea where I could find that one, please let me know. It's uh, something that I'm willing to spend money on. <laughs> Just let's leave it like that. So, first work in progress is the next iteration of the Moby sweater with Pierre Gint. Now, um, I am knitting one size up from this because this is super soft and this is, although it's floppy, it's tightish. So I really wanted something larger and uh, uh, less snuggly. And I think with this fabric, this very big fabric, will allow me to have exactly that. I don't know how it will turn out yet, but I'm sure amazing. Last work in progress of the series is... I'm losing stitching for the love. 
Here we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is uh, more stitches lost. This episode is gonna be terrifying. I will lose so many subscribers, don't care. Anyway, this is the Islander sweater by Sunless Garden, which you can find in this lovely booklet here. This is uh, Tema 72 by Sunless. We have a date, uh, we don't have a date, but it's basically this jumper here on the cover. Now, the yarn that I'm using is a combination of uh, these two color, which is uh, 464 and uh, 417 by um, Rauma Fino, former known PT2. This is a dark speckly brown and this is a mustard color. It goes together quite well. If you want to know the drama about these colors, go back to my last episode or the episode before and I tell you all about that. So I was once again watching Inga from the Knitting Tradition and she was knitting this exact thing and I really wanted it. So here we go, we start with the huge ribbing. The pattern asks for this massive ribbing. Never had this before, uh, but I think it would be a nice feature. And then the uh, Strand the color work pattern of the uh, design, the slender design. You can find this slender sweater uh, by many many companies. I know that um, Ellie from Skyngear Knits here on YouTube, she has a beautiful pattern that I was very tempted to get, but yeah I had this um, um, Sunless book so I was like why should I spend more money? And uh, this, at the end of the day, was what uh, Inga was knitting, so it was the exact same jumper that I wanted. So there are uh, dramas here as well, there is a bit of a drama. First of all, I started without swatching. This because the measurement of this yarn here, the specs, which is 175 grams, meters by 50 grams is the exact measurement that uh, the yarn that the pattern recommends has um, knitting needles exactly the same so I was thinking well I am following everything there apart from the brand uh, I should be fine so I went on with the smallest size kind of borderline following my rule of 260 and I got something huge, much bigger than this thing. I didn't like it, it was big. I knew that I wouldn't have worn it at all. So what I've done is a ravel, checking back the pattern. That size that I knit up was the very first size for the male version. They have a women's version, which has a smaller size as well. So I went with that, still not swatching. I should have swatched because this is annoying me very much. Anyway, I feel like this is going to be big as well. Bigger than I probably uh, want a jumper in. But at the same time, this is the first time that I knit in Rao Mafino PT2. And although it has lovely stitch a definition and everything, I feel like this is to be treated as a DK yarn more than a sport weight or finger weight yarn. So this is to tell you that the 260 rule doesn't really apply if you don't know the yarn. In this case Ramafino is very fluffy, very big, rustic, um, lump. You can't apply the same rule than if you're knitting with a host garden, which is more a thin, more... How can I say? Just more thin. Like, it plumps up when you wash it, but when you knit it up, it's thinner. So, things that we learn while we work. 
I am going to go on with this. I don't care. I have started this jumper about seven times and I feel like the ball of brown that I started the bottom on is getting weaker and weaker every time I start and I can't bring myself to cut the yarn and throw it away because it's quite special. Can't get this yarn in Ireland and uh, I had to ship it from abroad so you know all of that. We'll see how it turns like. I am finding myself wearing more and more jumpers, as I mentioned, more woolly stuff. So I'm very happy to have something cozy for the freezing cold evenings. Although, being the first time that I need to wear the Rauma Final, it's really coarse and difficult to knit with. So be mindful of that. If you haven't tried it and you want to try it, is almost like a holster garn of steroids. The yarn sticks to each other and is quite tough to work with. But I do enjoy the process very much, so happy days. That was it for me. I just thrown the jumper on the bag and hopefully I haven't lost any stitches. This was everything. Um, projects for the upcoming week is just to relax, try not to get too mad at the internet world. Um, I started my university course, one of the university courses that I am going to take and is becoming more and more intensive. It is basically about contract interpretation, which is something I haven't done since university probably. But yeah, it's interesting. It makes me um, realize how much uh, my academical background is actually helping to be a better lawyer. I am. I studied in Italy to become a lawyer there, and uh, we study much part of our studies is uh, civil law and uh, Roman law, the law that the ancient Romans used to have. And Roman law is full of, um, I wouldn't say theories, they call it broccardi, which is little small sentences that within them have a lot of meaning. And uh, we have an exam university that analyzes all of this brocardi, so you get through the theory of law for the Romans, so the explanation of, uh, I don't know, a contract, an obligation, or a criminal offense, this or that, or the good faith, for example, is probably the biggest chapter, chapter for this exam. Explaining good faith is uh, very difficult and uh, not just for us, but it was difficult back in the Romans time where they faced uh, not just defining good faith, but defining it for the very first time ever. And uh, I find that all of this stuff that I absolutely despised during the university, Roman law was one of the most difficult exams that I've taken, uh, I now use those thinking, those processes to make sense to what's happening if I have to interpret a contract nowadays within a system of law that is completely different from what I started or I um, grew up. Very luckily for you, the camera just stopped, <laughs> so let's just leave this illegal um, talks to another day. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, this would really mean a lot to me. My channel has slumped <laughs> physically in the last few weeks. If you don't upload uh, short videos or anything, for a few days, uh, YouTube uh, starts hating you, so you don't grow your channel. I don't mind, I need to be honest. But someone was telling me to let the audience, so you guys know that you should, or if you want to support this channel, please um, subscribe, um, click the bell button, the like, um, put a comment, even say hi. 
and I will help to get back into some sort of uh, algorithm liking, if you wish. Anyway, I don't care about all of these things. If you don't want to subscribe and you find me annoying, thanks. <laughs> Have a very wonderful day and uh, I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.